Greetings, greetings from James William Mugeni. James William Mugeni, I'm a medical clinic officer by profession. I'm a certified public manager. Currently living in the United States of America. Yes, fellow citizens, I'm back to speak about uh, the sensitive things, that, sensitive issues that are going on in our country. And uh, yesterday I briefly told you that uh, I'm a trained service provider in sexual reproductive health. And I was trained in 13 areas, 13 areas by Ministry of Health Uganda. Uh, my concern yesterday, and uh, which is also still there today, is the silence of what I would call stakeholders in health, Minister of Health. You are dead silent, and the country is grappling with uh, an issue they call homosexuality. Yes, in the 13 areas I mentioned yesterday, we looked uh, when we were training we looked at the sexual reproductive health situation in uganda anatomy and physiology of the male and female human reproductive system we looked at the menstrual cycle we looked at contraceptive use and contraceptive technology in uganda we looked at emergency contraception we looked at sti hiv stroke aids and we looked at interpersonal communication skills. We looked at gynecological conditions and we looked at the quality of care, logistics and supplies, understanding the reproductive health client, the service provider, male involvement in reproductive health issues, introduction to advocacy, and then Clinical practicals. Uh, I think today I want to look at um, understanding the reproductive health client and then the service provider. If I can quote our trainer, I forget her name. She was a lady, moreover. She told us, if you're health workers, you know, you're not going to carry your mor mor moralistic inclination to the clinic. You are not going to look at uh, your client as somebody who has got an STD because he's a homosexual. You're not going to look at your client as somebody who has got an STD because he's a, a crook or a harlot. You are not going to look at your client as somebody who has multiple sexual partners. I mean, you, the judgment, you're not going to judge them. And we are seeing a country judging people. The country is judging people and we trained people are silent, are silent. I have here a list. This is coming from Minister of Internal Affairs. A list of NGOs targeted because they, they offer services that they call promote homosexuality in the, in the country. My dear Ugandans, this phone you see here, the phones, the phones. The global village. I don't know what you can talk about us who are living in the United States. I'm in the United States. But uh, my sexual orientation is heterosexual. And I'm here. And I don't go out there announcing my sexual status to people here. And yet I'm a service provider. So if you are not providing service, which I heard, the UPDF, uh, a commander telling soldiers, the medical doctors in the army, don't provide service to these people. Yes, in the training, like I mentioned, they, talk, they told us about the reproductive health client. Who is this person? and who are instructed to give service in a non-discriminatory manner. And like I told you right now, if you went around the country, I remember Ward 7 in Mlago was known as the, an STD clinic. I don't know whether it still exists as an STD clinic, but we fought 
to change that such that anyone, any medical, any medic looks at a client from wherever they are. If they got you seated in an outpatient and they come, they tell you they have a discharge, you approach it as a medic at that area, at that time. You're not sending them to an STD clinic where they walk and get stigmatized. So, country, Ugandans, all of a sudden we have jumped in this thing. But like I told you yesterday, as a country we have wasted a lot of time. We have wasted a lot of time fighting. Fighting. And it's factual. It's known that wars don't only disrupt social structures of people. They also disrupt the economic capabilities of people. Now, what we have in the country currently is not no Muzungu is bringing this. It is the continuous fighting. It's the continuous image of seeing a soldier every day in your life. Where would a Ugandan look at a person who carries an AK-47 every day? You are driving, a traffic policeman is stopping you and he has an AK-47. You are going to church, there's somebody with an AK-47. You go to nursery schools, there's somebody with an AK-47. That image has promoted homosexuality in Uganda. That image. And right now, the army is playing a saint. The army is playing a saint. And they don't know that everywhere they're spreading ADF, 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 Mutareja, ADF, Niganga, ADF. That is the cause of homosexuality in Uganda. So citizens, and especially the medics, we who offer service in a non-discriminatory manner, and I would imagine the president of a country, the president of a country is like God, because irrespective of the sinners, there will be rain, there will be sunshine for all of us. And if you are a president of a country and, and you allow people who represent you, the RDCs, the soldiers, to tow the positions that we are seeing, we are destroying Uganda. We are in the United States. Some of us are here, are here. What will you talk about us who have come here? Are we the ones now who are going to bring that culture you're talking about? Won't you accuse us? First of all, with first closed NGOs, that supported politics, we call it. Now we are zeroing down on NGOs. By the way, that provides service to discriminated people. Discriminated people. That's why NGOs come in. And yet, Minister of Health, which is non-discriminatory, is silent. And this is where our medicine has totally gone wrong. Because we have allowed only one person to think for the lawyers, for the medics, for the engineers. What can Museven, for example, tell me in medicine? Me. I look at him as a client and I'm always waiting to treat him. The cloud he has around himself as a gunman, as a soldier. No. At the end of the day, the last office might be with me. So as medics, our silence is betrayal to the country. Good evening. Greetings from James in the USA.